Game Ranks presents 10 facts about Star Wars games that you probably didn't know. The only thing better than Star Wars movies is the vast catalog of Star Wars video games. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get rolling with number 10. I hate to use the overused phrase, but this one is actually pretty mind-blowing. Did you know that a new Star Wars game has released every single year since 1991? Yes, that means every single year from 1991 till now, a Star Wars game has released. Usually more than one. Of course, they aren't all good Star Wars games or proper console and PC games, but nonetheless, Star Wars has had some form of video game every single year since 91. That's a lot of video games. I was not kidding when I said there was a huge catalog of Star Wars games. And at number 9, here's a Star Wars fact that I still realize that a lot of people out on the street don't know. Star Wars 1313, that awesome action-adventure Star Wars game that looked so cool, the one that was cancelled and basically crushed everyone's dreams, well, that game was also being planned as being a Boba Fett game. Yeah, the game had a completely tumultuous development cycle which eventually led to its downfall, but towards the later stages, George Lucas wanted to rework it as an early story of Boba Fett's bounty hunter upbringing. You basically get to play this action-adventure game and experience Boba Fett's rise to bounty hunter power and greatness. That's like finding out your paycheck was lost in the mail, and not only was it lost in the mail, but it also had a Christmas bonus in it. Star Wars 1313 will be missed, and it's probably one of the cooler cancelled games of all time. And at number 8, do you guys remember Chad Vader? This was that old classic web series about Darth Vader who basically just worked at a grocery store. It was really funny and was hugely popular before YouTube was really a big thing. The voice actor and creator of Chad Vader, Matt Sloan, also went on to get a job doing Darth Vader's voice in Soul Calibur. He also starred as Darth Vader in the Force Unleashed game. He also went on to star as Darth Vader's voice in LEGO Star Wars, Connect Star Wars, Disney Infinity, and Battlefront. So if you want to become the voice of a famed character, get out there and make a web series. And at number 7, here's a crazy one that I didn't really believe until I did some research. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer from 1999, you know, the pod racer game, actually holds the record for the best-selling sci-fi racing game, beating out stuff like Wipeout, F-Zero, and more. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the hype was real. I played the hell out of that game on Nintendo 64. Back then, I thought the sense of speed and just how accurately it captured those scenes from the movie was the most awesome thing in the world. And apparently a lot of other people did too, because it sold that much. And at number 6, the very first Star Wars game was Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back in 1982. Yeah, believe it or not, the original Star Wars was such a big hit, but it took them a while to catch up on the video game front. The craziest thing about this little game is that it had no end. It basically went on forever and got harder and harder. The game was really simple. You controlled a snow speeder and you shot down AT-ATs, and you just have to hold them off before they get to the power generator. This old Atari 2600 game just kept getting more and more punishing and never ended, and really, people back then just really determined their self-worth by how high they could get their score. And at number 5, the MMORPG Star Wars The Old Republic has the world record for the most dialogue, with more than 200,000 lines. Fallout New Vegas holds the single player action adventure record, but Star Wars The Old Republic is really an absolute giant when it comes to voice acting. Yeah, okay sure, maybe they didn't use a lot of voice actors, so they got a lot of work out of them, but 200,000 lines of dialogue, that is absolutely massive, and Guinness World Records recognize that for good reason. And at number 4, one of the coolest community mod projects ever is the Sith Lords Restored Content Mod for the PC version of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. The project, made up by a bunch of modders and designers, set out to restore some of the content that was cut from the original game due to time constraints. Knights of the Old Republic 2 by Obsidian was famous for having a bit of a rushed development cycle. This mod adds a lot of extended conversations, alternate endings, deeper subplots, and fixes a bunch of bugs in the game. The mod is an ongoing project, but if you played KOTOR 2 or not, this is worth revisiting because it changes the game quite a bit. And if you've never played KOTOR 2 before, this is probably how you should play it. Sometimes mods really just do make things better. Also, they added a location of the HK manufacturing plant, which is really cool because you get to see where they make droids like HK-47, one of the coolest characters. And at number 3, since we're talking about modders, there are actually over 800 maps available for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes, the PC version of Star Wars Battlefront 2 has a healthy community and people have been making maps for this game for basically ever. There's actually a Google spreadsheet that's public access that you can find that has a list of every single mod, new planet, new level, and every developer and modder who worked on them. I would really, really like to see this happen for Battlefront, but I'll probably keep dreaming because EA is involved. That being said, that just goes to show that Battlefront 2 on a PC is definitely worth revisiting. You should jump in because people still play it all the time and now it's a totally different game. And at number two, ugh, all right, let's talk about the free radical Battlefront 3 that was canceled. Remember the first footage that surfaced of a Battlefront 3 that looked totally awesome? 
Yeah, that. Well, a little known fact that besides this game being totally awesome, it had a lot of really interesting characters they were adding in. First of all, you were going to be able to play as Dirge from the Clone Wars, which was totally sweet because he looks like an absolute powerhouse. But more importantly and interestingly is that Jar Jar was a playable character. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. I don't know why. I don't know why they were doing this. Maybe just to be silly and funny. And it looked totally ridiculous. And I could only imagine him becoming the number one target in every single round. Or if I got to play as him during a round, I would immediately rush into oncoming blaster fire because that's what Jar Jar deserves. And at number one, the first Star Wars Atari stand-up arcade game was made in 1983 and it was considered completely state of the art. This game used vector graphics and it was a first person perspective where you flew around space in an X-Wing and shot down TIE fighters and people lost their minds for it. The fact that it felt like you were really in an X-Wing and you were actually flying around in a 3D digital space was totally cool. Lucas and the developers had a really strict vision for this and they had to go out of their way to to develop new ways of microprocessing to really push the powerful 3D looking vector graphics. This arcade cabinet had a stand up version and also a version that you could sit down in. It was one of those arcade games that developed crowds around it and lines of people dying to play because it was absolutely state of the art. So guys, those were some facts about all the Star Wars video games. We hadn't really seen any videos like this, so we went around, tried to find some cool facts to share with you guys, so let us know in the comments what you think of them. Do you have any cool facts about some Star Wars games that maybe we don't know about? Let us know, share with everybody in the comments. If you had a good time with this video and you like Star Wars, maybe you like Star Wars games, click the like button because that helps us out so much. And if this is your first time coming around here, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.